I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Coney Island Nocturne. Yes, we have a story for you. Come right over. chair by the window. Comfortable? The manuscript is on this shelf. Here it is, Coney Island Nocturne, the very absorbing story of fingers that were nailed by death. Let's look at it under the reading lamp. When Mike Donahue brought Helen O'Malley to Coney Island for an evening of fun, he had only the best intentions. Naturally, he was an officer of the law, a detective. And she was his fiancée. But three hours later, they stood in the middle of a crowded, noisy carnival street. They were faced with a crisis of catastrophic proportions. Mike, I'm afraid I'll never understand you. How many times have I told you never to keep your wallet in your hip pocket? Yeah. If you were just another palooka who didn't know any better, then, well, all right. But you're a member of the pickpocket squad. You're supposed to know. Yeah. Haven't you got anything to say? How much money have you got on you? Enough to get us home. Helen, you're not going to tell the boys at the station house. No, dear. I still expect to marry you someday. I want congratulations, not sympathy. Yeah, well... Hey, Mike. Uh, hmm? Who was that? Look over there, honey, and you'll see a character. Hiya, Mike. I never thought I'd be glad to see you. Benny Gould. You recognize me, don't you? Look me over, pal. I've done a 60-day stretch in a workhouse, and I ain't a bit tired. <laughs> what are you doing down here, Benny? You thought your territory was Times Square. I got a job. I'm going straight, Mike. You don't say. Yep. Got fed up looking through bars. So now I'm a barker for a show up the street. Hey, who's the uh, tomato? Helen O'Malley, chipmunk. Do you consider me fruit or vegetable? Huh? Oh, <laughs> It's a riot, Mike. Is it uh, permanent? Put your hands behind your head, Benny. What? I'm going to frisk you. Now, do you want to put him up, or do I have to coach you? I put him up. You can't got nothing on me. I'm on a level now, Mike. You're an old-time pickpocket, Benny. You know, where you cops make a label stick. Once a crook, always a crook. Mike, he wouldn't have your wallet. Maybe not, Helen. But this dip can pick the whiskers off a sleeping cat and get away with it. Okay, Benny. Thanks. Come on, Helen. Hey, wait a minute. Was she kidding about your wallet? You're blocking traffic. Come on, you don't have to be ashamed to tell me about it. I used to be in a business. Uh, you wouldn't be giving it to us now, would you? Look, I know every dip on the island. Give me a chance, maybe I'll get your wallet back for you. Why, chipmunk? Because I'm a good citizen, that's why. All right, Benny, let's go. Hey, what is this, a pinch? You were going to take me to the wallet, weren't you? Well, i got to find it first, Mike. Suppose we do that together, huh? Uh-uh. Now, I ain't putting my finger on nobody. If you want your property, then you'll wait till I nab the guy that's got it, and then I'll bring it to you. Don't argue, Mike. Be practical. That's what I say, sister. I'm doing him a favor. But how is it done, Chipmunk? Coney Island's a big place. Well, I contact a few of the dips, and they spread the word around, that's all. Okay, Benny. It's going to take time, Mike. Uh, meet me at the beach at the end of the boardwalk in a couple hours, 11 o'clock. And don't follow me. We won't. Mike wants his wallet, and I want Mike to be happy. We'll meet you on the beach at 11 o'clock. Boardwalk and... Oh, I think we ought to adopt Benny, don't you? It was his suggestion. Oh, we're not exactly alone, Helen. Are you going to worry about that girl all night? Well, she might be watching us. She's fast asleep. Besides, she's a good 30 feet away. Come on, my bashful Romeo. Give me a... Hmm? It's only me, Mike. I didn't want to keep you waiting. Benny, don't you ever blow your horn when you come to a crossing? Blow my... Oh, I get it. Well, I figured it didn't mean nothing. See, there ain't no moon out. Have you got the wallet? Not yet, pal. You said 11 o'clock, and it's almost half past. Okay, but Coney Island's got a lot of depths, and it's spread out all over. you got to be patient, Mike. How much longer? Listen, i got a couple of dozen guys working right now. Stick around for a little while. You ain't got nothing to lose with that tomato. I'll see you later. Where are you going? My boss gets worried when he don't know what I'm doing. So long. Now, Mike, 
Where were we? What do you mean, Helen? When we were so rudely interrupted with a report about nothing. Oh, uh, let's go home, huh? But, Mike... Well, it's a long trip, honey, and I've got to be at the station house at 8 o'clock in the morning. But your wallet... Then he can send it to me. He knows where. What was that? Thunder, baby, and we'll have to run. I hope it pours. Help me All up. All right, come on. I hope it pours for 40 days and 40 nights. Well, let's go. Wait a minute. We can't leave that girl sleeping there on the beach. No. No, I'm going to wake her up. Oh, of course. Oh, don't be unreasonable, Helen. There's going to be a storm. How would you like to get drenched? Why wait for a storm? You can dampen my spirits. Uh oh. What's the matter? It's raining. Already? I just felt a drop on my nose. Let's get out of here, Mike. Wait a minute, dear. Oh, excuse me, lady. I think you'd better. Uh, Miss. Miss. Why don't you just yell in her ear? I don't think it would do any good, Helen. Well, try it and find out. I just felt another drop. You just can't wake up the dead by making a lot of noise. Huh? Mike, she isn't... She is, Helen. From head to foot. The poor kid... And to think we were sitting only 30 feet away on the same beach. Well, she was dead before we got here, Helen. I'll never forgive myself, Mike, the way I talked about her. But if it hadn't been for that storm that never broke, I... Mike, I feel terrible. Well, here's something to keep you busy. Her handbag? Yeah, look through it. She might have some identification. All right. I should get to a call box, you know. The local police might have hear about this. I'm not staying here alone. I don't know what there is about the dead that scares Are people, Are you sure but... she was murdered, Mike? Her skull was crushed with a sandbag. I can't believe a little thing like that could kill anybody. Well, this little thing weighs about ten pounds, honey, and it's packed solid. Well, Mike. What's the matter? Look, your wallet. Well, I'll be... It was in her handbag. Give it to me. Of all things, that girl, a pickpocket. 20, 25, 30, It sort of shatters your faith in people, doesn't it? 40, so young and so pretty. 40, it's all here, What's Helen? all here? My money. Oh, that's good. Well, aren't you glad? I'm too busy wondering about human nature. Postpone it until we get a line on the girl. Come on, keep looking in her handbag. Mike, darling, you may be a detective, but... Then I'll look. That's your job. Oh, dear, a pickpocket. Mike, what kind of people murder pickpockets? All kinds. Well, I mean, pickpockets are the lowest kind of crooks, the bottom of the underworld. They don't work in mobs, do they? Sometimes. Hmm. Maggie Blake. What's that? A name on this identification card. A pickpocket with a... It doesn't make sense, Mike. It never does, honey, until you know what it's all about. Do you? No, but I'm going to find out. That's nice. Where do we start? First, we head to a call box. Get the homicide squad working. As long as we do it together, dear. And after that, we're going to Josie Johnson's Palace of Joy. We're going where? Read it. It's on this business card I found in Maggie Blake's handbag. Oh. Well, as long as they advertise, it should be all right, shouldn't it? Helen, what's wrong with you? You'll never know, Mike, what I thought you were talking about. It's you. I'm glad to see you again. Where have you been keeping yourself? I went out for a walk, Josie. You're a liar. Hey, now look. I said you're a liar. What are you going to do about it? We're, uh... We're doing pretty good business, Josie. So what? Suckers like the show we give them. I give them. You're only window dressing like a husband should be. But you're not even good window dressing. Uh, put that bottle back. I haven't had a drink all night, Josie. Put it back and lock that drawer. Oh, just one. There's the key on top of the desk. Use it. Between you and me, I don't care if you drink yourself into pink elephants. But you talk when you're drunk. And that's bad for me. Oh, I don't know why I've got to take it from you. Stop any time you want. There's a bed at the bottom of the ocean. Now, give me that key. I started this business. It was my idea to set up the show. That was so long ago, you've died a hundred times since. Where have you been for the last three hours? I told you. Just walking around, huh? Inhaling the fresh Coney Island air. I got tired sitting around the office watching you run you things. You said you were going out front for a couple of minutes to look around. So I went for a walk. What's the difference? Came back and you weren't here, so I went out again. How's uh, Maggie Blake? What? Don't look so dumb. You are out with her, weren't you? No. Pete, this is Josie you're talking to, your wife. I've known you for a long time. I haven't seen the girl, I tell you. You, you warned me to lay you off, and I, I... Was she here? 
Are you kidding? Well, didn't she even bring in the take? Are you calling me a cheat? No, no, wait, wait, Josie, wait a minute. You, you know I don't think you're a doubler, but Maggie always comes in a few times like the others, and she's pretty regular. She was too busy tonight. Not with me. Shut up, Pete. You're through making a monkey out of me. Josie, you're all wrong. Everybody I... on the island's talking about you and Maggie. I'm telling you for the last time, I don't like it. I don't like people feeling sorry for me. Well, why don't you give her the air? Because she knows too much. Uh, Palace of Joy. Josie Johnson talking. Uh, this is Bunny. I got a message for Pete. What is it? Tell him I can't find Maggie Blake. That's all. That's enough, Benny. Nice going, Pete. Huh? When did you decide to use Benny as a stooge? What do you mean, Joe? What do you take me for, a two-year-old? You think I start believing because Benny calls up and says you've had him looking for Maggie? Is that what he just told you? You cheap, chiseled sneak! <laughs> now get out of here. Go out front and help take tickets. I'm sorry you did that, Joe. Go on, go on. I get sick looking at you. You've been having things your own way too long, baby. Look out you don't drop dead one of these days. Oh, you're very funny, Pete. Yeah, yeah. I'm a real comedian, but don't laugh too hard. You're liable to fall out of this world. office here, Helen. Another door besides the main entrance from the street. Should bees don't count. So this is the Palace of Joy. Who's crazy, Mike? The world? I've got no time to think about it now. Oh, excuse me. The pickpocket squad has to solve a murder first. Life can wait. I tell you, Maggie Blake, it's something to do with this place. Just because you found that business card in her handbag. Maybe. You're driving without lights, darling. Business cards don't prove... Say, Mike. Hmm? There's Benny. Where? Talking to that man by that puppet stage. Well, that's funny. I was looking over there only a minute ago. I didn't see anyone. It could be magic, you know. Ah, this must be the place he works in. And maybe that's Josie Johnson he's talking to. Come on, we'll ask him a few questions about Maggie Blake. Anything you say, dear, you're the law. But who would come here to see a puppet show? This isn't exactly a playground for kids. Oh, are you beginning to get ideas, too? It just hit me, all of a sudden. Maybe the shows they put on here are not for kids. You know. I've been around, sweetheart. What? Concentrate on Benny and his partner. They've seen us and they've stopped talking. Hiya, Mike. Hey, how'd you and the doll find out about me in the palace? You've been uh, asking questions? We found a card in the storm, Benny. Storm? What you talking about, Mike? There ain't been no storm. Who's this guy, Benny? Give me a chance to introduce you to him. Pete, this is Mike Donahue, a deck from Times Square. Well, pleased to meet you. Pickpocket squad. The name's his girlfriend. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoy yourselves. I'll be seeing you. Just a minute. I've seen you before someplace. Were you over in the lineup at police headquarters? Who, me? What's your full name? Pete. Peter Blake. Mike. Peter Blake, eh? Any relation to Maggie? Yeah. Yeah, she's my niece. But she's not in trouble, is she, Mr. Donahue? Not anymore. Benny, where do I find Josie Johnson? The boss? Mm-hmm. I don't get it, Mike. You're acting just like a cop on the prowl. You recognize all the signs, don't you? Get Josie Johnson. The boss ain't here. Benny, you want me to be nice to you? I'm telling the truth, Mike. I came back looking for the boss myself. Pete told That's me. That's right, Mr. Donahue. Now, now, would you mind? I'd, I'd like to know about my niece. She's been murdered, Mr. Blake. Murdered? Yeah. You're kidding, Mike. Not that cute little kid that used oh, to... Oh, Maggie. Take Maggie. it easy, Pete. That's not going to get you no price. Oh, but why? Why should anybody kill Maggie? She never... Mr. Donahue, where is she? At the morgue by now. Would you like to tell me what she never did? I'm going to claim her body. I'll see you later if she's still here. Mike, you're not letting him go, are you? Why not, Helen? But he didn't even ask how his niece was killed. I noticed it. I noticed the tears, too. They were the kind you find on a crocodile. So, why didn't you hold him? Darling, a policeman doesn't hold everybody. Does he, Benny? Well, pick on me, Mike. I don't know nothing about it. Sure. Okay, so don't... Give me the eye like I was ready for the wagon. I'm on your side, ain't I? I'm trying to get your wallet back for you, ain't I? Keep trying, Benny. Okay, I'll go out and contact some more depths. Stick around. I'll let you know what comes up. Mike, 
Why didn't you tell him you've got the wallet? Then Benny would have stuck around, too. And I think we ought to be alone. Here, with all these people? They won't pay any attention to us. They're too busy having fun. Well, we're going to get busy, too. What do you mean? How did Benny and Pete get to this puppet stage without my seeing them? Magic? Maybe. But I've got a hunch. We find out how, and we'll find out why and who killed Maggie Blake. Sneaking in through that alley door. There's a dick out front, Josie. Yeah? He was asking for you. Benny and I played dumb. We didn't tell him you were here in the office. What was he asking for me for? Murder. Huh? Maggie Blake. You killed her, Josie. Have you gone crazy? <laughs> now, wait a minute, I've been Pete. waiting a long time, baby. You shouldn't have done it. You're going to have to leave town now. We'll see about that. That was some act you put on before. Getting hot because I was out with Maggie. But you knew I wasn't, didn't you, Josie? You knew she was dead. You knew exactly where she was because you'd left her Hello, there. Express. I want the city editor. You thought please. I was sweet on her. Well, sure I was. I was nuts about her. But you didn't have to kill her. She was going to get married. Yeah, yeah, she found herself a boyfriend, a good, clean kid... She was going to quit the racket. She told me this afternoon, Josie. City editor, this is Josie Johnson. I own the Palace of Joy. I've just been told... All right, I'll wait. I wasn't going to tell you about it. I was going to let her get away first. I was going to make sure she lived to get married, but Shut you... Shut up, Pete. Hello? Yeah, Josie Johnson. I've just been told that one of my employees was murdered. Maggie Blake. Uh-huh. Uh, on the beach? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Well, it checks, don't it, Angel? She was slugged with a sandbag, Pete. How soon are you going, Josie? Gone where? Away. You're not waiting for the cops, are you? I didn't kill her. That dick out front thinks you did. He asked for you. Yeah, and you told him I wasn't here. You wanted him to think I'd taken a powder. Why don't you? I'll give you enough dough to get out of the country. You give me? This is my show. Now, meet the new boss. You don't say. Yeah, I do... <laughs> That's for the new boss, Pete. Why, you red-headed... What's that? Hey, come on, open up! Detective ah. Mike Donahue. Who told him about that door behind the puppet stage? I'm not waiting to find out. So long, Josie, and good burning to you. Not as long as you're alive, Pete. Don't run so fast, baby. You'll go through the wall. Open that door and let's get out of here. I'm glad you built that other door solid. For a louse, you used to have good ideas. Look around before you go into that alley. It's clear. You got the keys. Come on, come on, have you got him? I got him. Okay, give him to me. I'll lock this door on the outside. Boy, whoever put that door up... Mike, you're with... wonderful. Hmm? Tell that to my commissioner. There was a man and woman in here. We heard the voices. Locked. They didn't go out this way. You said there was something behind that puppet stage. But why an office? What kind of a business that would they... That door over there. It's the only way out. Mike, is there something in this palace of joy besides uh, uh, joy? Well? Flight of steps going down the cellar. Are we going down that flight? Yeah. Here's the light switch. Oh, I'd feel a lot safer, Mike, if there were more than two of us. Let's not think about that now. Come on, follow me. <laughs> Mike. Stop worrying, Helen. There's nobody down here. How can you be so sure? All these boxes piled in rows up to the ceiling. Suppose those two people are behind one of these rows. They're not waiting to see the whites of our eyes, honey. If they were down here, they... Uh, wait a minute. I'd rather go, Mike. Sandbag. Just like the one Maggie Blake was killed with. What difference does it make? There's a puppet stage upstairs. Why can't they keep an extra sand... Oh. Oh. I see what you mean. Thanks. You're almost as slow as I am. Sandbags are used to hold down the curtain. The one on the beach had to come from here. But there are other puppet shows at Coney Island. But only one palace of joy that Maggie Blake was connected with. We met her uncle upstairs, remember? Yes, dear. Uh, shall we go now? Not yet. There must be some way that man or woman got out. Let's turn this corner. I'm sure we won't find prosperity. <gasps> those men. Hmm? All those men standing against the wall. What's the matter with you, Helen? Can't you see they're only dummies? I don't care that they are. I'm not taking another step. All right, stay here. With pleasure. 
Those filthy, horrible-looking things. Yeah, I can tell you exactly what they are. Helen, where are you? Sitting down, Mike, behind the pile of boxes. Well, listen, these are training dominies. The kind they uh, old-time pickpockets used to, to teach newcomers. Come over here, and I'll show you the lights that flash on when the student is clumsy. Hmm. Palace of Joy, huh? Hmm. Josie Johnson's running a school for pickpockets. That means that Benny is Figure one of the... Figure it out for yourself, Cupcake. Hmm? My, do you look surprised. Who are you? Josie Johnson. Now, turn around, Mike, and I'll take your pretty thirty-eight out of your pretty holster. Uh-uh. Just keep your hands up high. Where's Helen, the girl that was She's down here? She's resting. She collided with the butt of my gun, and it uh, knocked her out. Why did you do it? I got jealous. You're uh, such a handsome guy for a cop. You know all about me, eh? <laughs> Not all, Cupcake. Give me time. I've only just met you. I'm going to go look for Helen. Not without my permission. Now, listen, she might be barely hurt. She'll recover in time for the wedding. How would you like to be a hero? You make a practice of hitting women on the head. Mike, I'm trying to get you a medal. I know who killed Maggie Blake. Yeah? I guess it was somebody else, wasn't it? It was. And if you'll go quietly, I'll take you right to him. Where? He's in my apartment. And he's dying to meet you. Go ahead, Cupcake. Turn the knob. How about the key, Josie? I never lock my door. I'm a free trader. Okay. Forward, Mike. I'll be right behind you. Loaded to the hilt. You're so persuasive. You'll admit I've got a way about me. Yeah, so I see. Hm. Is that the guy who's dying to meet me? That's him, sprawled out over that table, drunk again. Pete. Hey, Pete. Say, that's Maggie Blake's uncle. What? Who told you that? He did. Well, he'll tell you differently. That's Pete Johnson, my husband. Wake him up. Well, I'll get him to sit up first. <clears throat> A knife in his chest. Pete. You can't hear you, Josie. He's dead. Killed himself. Yeah. He couldn't take the rap. He must have done it just before we came in. He's still got his fingers around the knife. Will you stop kidding me? Uh, what do you mean? Your initials are on the handle. J.J. So what? The knife was on that table and he took it. Josie, you ought to know what happens right after a person dies. He's dead, so? His body relaxes. If Pete killed himself, he wouldn't be holding on to the knife. Huh? You catch on fast, don't you? Pete's fingers were wrapped around that knife after he was killed. You're not going to say I did it, Mike. Who else? You brought me here to arrest Pete for murder. But you knew he was already dead. Set up to look like suicide. You're raving, mister. That was going to be your alibi. Pete couldn't take the rap. Your own words, Josie. Yeah. Well. Huh. How many bullets do I get? I ought to give them all to you. Both guns. That means I get a hero's funeral. Turn around and walk to that wall. I get it in the back, huh? Gangster style. That wall, Mike. All right. But remember, no practice shots. You're pretty cool for tamale. Death in the line of duty. It makes great newspaper copy. Turn your face to the wall. Now, just stand there and don't move and don't look. So long, cupcake. Hey, what's the idea? Josie, you'll never get out of New York. You know that. Well, and she told me she never locks her door. It's all right, Helen. Everything's all right now. Mike, what hit me? The butt of a gun. Next time, you'll stick close to me. Uh, who did? Josie Johnson. She locked me in her apartment. Oh. Lucky for me, there was a window facing a street. You should have heard me yell. Josie Johnson. Mike, did you say she? Mm-hmm. Her glamorous redhead. Shh. Mike. Shh. Somebody's down here. The redhead? I don't know. These boxes are in the way. Can you get up without screaming? If you help me. All right, then. Easy now. Oh, oh, oh. I made it. Come on, on your toes. No more talk. If it's Josie, she's got two guns. One of them is mine. Going someplace, Benny? Uh, look out, Mike. She's got a gun on her You'll never get a chance to use it, will you, Benny? I got my hand. Let go of the gun. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that was you and a dog, Mike. I wouldn't pull no gun on you. But you did. That's a lot of money you packed into that suitcase. Do you expect to spend it in one I, lifetime? You gotta listen to me, Mike. I don't got it, pal, but I'll be glad to. Look, I found out that Josie and Pete was operating a pickpocket school. 
When the kids was ready, they used to send them out to dip. Tell me about the money. Well, the kids used to bring in the whole take to Josie. She'd give them a cut and put the rest of it in that hole behind that hunk of concrete. How does a barker find out about such things, Benny? I heard Josie and Pete talking. And you knew exactly where to go for the money. You gotta listen to me, Mike. I ain't no killer. Come on, let's take a walk. No, wait. I don't, I don't want that dough. I, I, I was just gonna take it because, well, you know, it was there and I, I figured... You should have made sure Pete was dead before you left him. What? It's not so easy to find the heart with a knife. Sometimes you're missed by a fraction of an inch. And you wind up in the electric chair. What are you giving me, Mike? Pete Johnson, otherwise known as Peter Blake. A famous uncle. He ain't dead. He is now... But a lot of people heard his dying statement. Would you like to know what it was? You're kidding me. Don't look around, Benny. There's no way out of this cellar except through You're me. You're kidding me, you dirty copy. You're kidding me. Let's go, Weasel. The show's over. And you put on a pretty good one. It's too bad for you it didn't click. worst part of going to Coney Island, the ride home in the subway. Yeah. Oh, well, Benny's confession sort of makes it worthwhile. Imagine that chipmunk having the whole thing planned from the beginning, yeah. picking your pocket and then asking us to meet him on the beach where he'd left Maggie Blake's dead body. What a character. And all for a few measly dollars. Thirty thousand. I even thought he'd get away with it. You'd suspect Josie and Pete Johnson of Maggie's murder and he'd be... Mike, you didn't tell me how he got to Pete to kill him. I guess I'll have to, will I? Well, he followed them to their apartment after they left the office. Yes. Then he phoned Josie and told her to help him frame Pete. She came back to the palace looking for me. Well, the rest is history. Yes, but Mike, what made you suspect Benny? Two things, sweetheart. Josie had a chance to kill me and didn't. And Benny going for the money in the wall. Uh, can I go to sleep now, dear? One more thing. What happened to Josie? She was picked up. Now, darling... All right, honey. Mike. Hmm? Is this your wallet? Where'd you get it? Out of your hip pocket. For a member of the pickpocket squad, you are about the easiest pickings I've ever known. Good night, dear. And so closes tonight's story, Coney Island Nocturne. Stedman Coles wrote the radio script. Roger Bauer produced and directed. Walter Kinsella played Mike Donahue. Joan Alexander was Helen O'Malley. Jean Ellen was heard as Josie Johnson. Bill Quinn was Peter Johnson. And Joseph Julian was Benny Gould. Oh, I beg your pardon. Hello, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Yes. Come over a week from tonight. Good. We have the very exciting story of a sparkle that bloomed into murder. It's called Death Deals a Diamond. In the meantime... Well, in the meantime, there is a new crime club book available this week and every week at bookstores everywhere. Yes, it's available now. Fine. And we'll look for you next week. This program came from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.